We're a, a video production business. Uh, we're a small business. Uh, we service agencies, we do work direct to client, and um, basically we get involved for all the fun stuff. Video capture, and about 40% of what we shoot, we cut as well. Currently, we're using the Freefly Systems Movi Pro. We're also lucky enough to have the Freefly Tero. So those two can pair together and get some awesome imagery. For the most part, we use the, the Freefly Movi Pro in handheld mode, but when we need to, we can uh, mount it and put on the Tero. We were one of the first in Australia to get our, our hands on the M10, going back probably three and a half, uh, four years ago now. We bought an M5 soon after because we use heavier cameras and also light DSLR style cameras. We use a C100 quite regularly on the M5. Using the M10 and M5 has served us really well. Now we're onto the Mobi Pro. I have personally used a few of the other products that are on the market and I can safely say without a shadow of a doubt that the uh, Free Fry product is far more refined and the software behind it works flawlessly. You need some professional tools that are going to be reliable on the job and reliability is one of the key things that I look for with any product. When we heard about the Mobi Pro, when it got announced, we thought, oh my God, they've thought of all the time-saving things that we wish for, things like the Mobi Ring. That was a genius idea. You don't have to have someone chasing you around with a stand, you can just rest it down. It doesn't sound like much, but when you're holding anything out in front of you for a lengthy period of time, any little bit of respite that you can get is invaluable. The Mobi Pro, it's evident that you know the motors on there um, are far stronger, in particular the pan motor. So for any aerial work that we do, having a stronger, stiffer pan motor, you're able to hold shots at higher speeds and higher winds a lot easier. So it's a difference between getting the shot or not getting the shot. Previously, we were able to power accessories um, through the lipos, through using splitters, um, and taping or velcroing uh, other batteries uh, to the gimbal. Now we have a one-stop power station area where we can just plug in DTAP, we can power the camera. So we use a C300 Mark II and we can power the camera from the 6 amp DTAP from the gimbal. Um, we can use RE minis and reds and power those separately. You can also run fizz motors from that stage as well. You can run your Connex, you can run your wireless uh, follow focus system. There's a plethora of options in terms of powering. So what that actually means is that you don't actually have to turn the camera off. You can just keep the gimbal on all day, hot swap on the Mobi Pro batteries, and you don't have to worry about uh, rebooting. So another really cool thing about Freefly is they have a Mimic. Um, in the beta version, in the early days, uh, it was fantastic. You were able to hand a uh, handlebar system with a screen and let a director or DOP move that and that would translate to the camera on the gimbal. That was a genius idea, but sometimes the range was a bit of an issue and of course you can't control any camera settings from that. Now with the final version of Mimic, you're able to actually start, stop, record. You've got a huge amount of range. You can actually have the drone up in the sky and still change camera settings and roll up, which is super handy. And that works with our Canons, Reds and Aries. running a, a red package, um, we can do a number of things with that. So we can actually obviously roll up, start, stop, record. Uh, we can change all the exposure settings and we can also change frame rates. And on top of that, you can also control the gimbal uh, as well. So you can increase or decrease uh, your stiffness settings. You can change from majestic angle to smooth lock. And you can also use it as a, a follow focus. You've got fizz control on there for iris zoom and focus as well with the bush pilot, which is awesome. The M10 has changed everything uh, for us. The Freefly system has enabled us to have a small footprint. So we can build our rig uh, prior to the shoot, rock up, don't have to set out any dolly tracks. We don't have to have these elaborate setups. We can move really fast, get these big budget style moves without all the setup that's involved. So I sell it to my clients that I can actually run around with a gimbal and get a lot more coverage and better shots without the sacrifice of time. Not too long ago, we did a shoot for Volkswagen and uh, we had a Flow Cine black arm set up and we're actually shooting an off-road 
uh, scenario. So usually we shoot car stuff on road, on bitumen, you know, flat, smooth surfaces. And this time around we're shooting on really bumpy sort of terrain. So we mounted the Movi Pro to the Flow City Black Arm. In an off-road environment, it's extremely challenging because we're hitting corners at, you know, at speed. And you know, I've got some imagery of the gimbal being totally crossed up, but keeping that horizon and the pan motor staying strong throughout. And it's quite refreshing to have a gimbal that's gonna outperform um, the previous M10 in terms of strength, hold strength. Um, so banking corners, holding horizon, um, not having to get out of the car and reset every time, um, knowing that it's going to work uh, with the Mimic inside the vehicle, um, it's been fantastic. What's really cool is that we're able to link up a Sony PS4 controller uh, to the Mimic and adjust all our camera moves like a video game. So the biggest crowd pleaser has to be the Free Fly Terra with the Mobi Pro. Anytime we bring that, everyone's taking photos and asking questions about it. What a unique product. I call it a dolly on wheels. We're able to take it anywhere and get a very interesting perspective. The reason why I think using a gimbal uh, for the work that we do is sometimes better than use a traditional Steadicam is because we're able to do some interesting moves with it. So obviously the form factor, Having the camera up high, then in the same shot, having it down low is something that you can achieve with a gimbal over a Steadicam. Now, I'm not saying that a gimbal is going to be the magic bullet and take over everything that a Steadicam can do, but it certainly has some interesting attributes about it. Something that not many people are aware of or haven't seen before, and I discovered it by accident, is having the Moby Pro set up in smooth lock and being able to uh, pull up the tilt on the cage and getting these interesting uh, tilts, these little whip tilts um, that look really, really cool. One of the best things I must say about the uh, Freefly ecosystem is moving from one setup to another. So I recently done a shoot with um, Canon Australia and we'll be using the Freefly systems Alta 6, Alta 8, Tero and Mobi Pro. Now I'm able to set up my camera package inside that Mobi Pro and move it easily from Tero to Alta to handheld within seconds, literally just a few clicks. A lot of times when I talk to clients, they're worried about gimbal work, thinking that it's gonna be these smooth, floaty shots everywhere you go. But you're actually gonna be able to get handheld shots through shaky cam. You can do static shots like a tripod. You can fine tune and adjust all the settings in terms of camera movement, how aggressive the pans are or how soft they come on. A lot of the time uh, with the Mobi Pro, you might see it looking a bit wild. The Mobi Pro does such a great job of stabilizing the image that you, you're in disbelief when you see what comes out of it. So when we're on the shoot with the Flow City Black Arm, uh, when the gimbal's jumping around like crazy, uh, the shots are silky smooth. When it's up in the sky, when it's really, really windy, you see the altar shaking around, but the resulting shot's always really, really smooth. In this game, it's all about trying to find a point of difference. It's always trying to find a shot that you can do for an affordable price without a huge setup time. One of the ones that we do, and one of the ones that we're proud of is using the Freefly Tero, the Movi Pro, and a Phantom high-speed camera. When you're traveling at speed with the Tero and you've got the camera pointed at your subject, you get this bullet time effect. The Mobi Pro has a new battery system and you're able to now power the whole package from the gimbal. Genius, makes perfect sense. Instead of every single accessory having its own power, uh, you can just hot swap Mobi Pro batteries. It's only one charge that you have to worry about. You don't have to add any more weight to the gimbal so you can keep the weight down and have longer run times. On the back of the gimbal, you can do your auto tune, which is super handy. It does it a lot faster now. The gimbal doesn't need to turn uh, left and right, and it all happens really, really quick. You can tune the gimbal inside 60 seconds. So now you get like a two second boot time, which is amazing because when you rest it, uh, you're able to power it back on and away it goes. You can have all your accessories running, double tap on the back, and the movie goes limp. You're able to have access to the camera, swing a lens, adjust the setting, uh, double tap, and it's back on again. So this is vital for saving time on set. 
One thing that's amazing with FreeFly is the toad on the hole. You're able to go from a drone to RC car to handheld uh, really, really quickly. Um, it locks in and then you've got a safety latch that closes it and you know the thing's not going to come off. Some of the work that we do involves filming cars and uh, with filming cars you need a tracking vehicle, you need a camera on that tracking vehicle. So having like a Ninja Star with a toad in the hole that you can mount anywhere, you can run the Moby Pro inverted with having the camera the right side up with ease. You can adopt that onto a sliding plate and you can fix it to a crane, and you can fix it to a suction mount setup on a vehicle or even a tripod. When the uh, M10 and M15 were around, we were like, how on earth are you going to improve upon this setup? And the Moby Pro came out. So I can't think of too much more besides of longer run time and lower weight, but somehow I think FreeFly will always push the envelope in terms of the engineering and R&D. What that is, I don't really know. There's a FreeFly XL out at the moment. It'd be great to be able to lift that to the sky. But as it stands, I don't know what else FreeFly can do, but I'm sure they're going to surprise me.